and they were all over Israel at that time. Okay. And, and, and Brother Abba, please. Also homosexuality. Ah. Yeah. Um, it became what? Uh, Sister Wiley? Become, um, become normal, and just like today, we see homosexuals uh, come out of the closet, and now they just they talk about it like it's nothing. So uh, this is something that you have different pride, pride uh, parades and everything else. So it shows how rampant it has come in our day, too. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Francis. Let's move on to part of night, because uh, we come to the third tactic. Uh, let's see how he, he, he used that. Satan used a third tactic. He blurred the Israelites' view of Jehovah. In the days of the prophet Jeremiah, Jehovah declared that the false prophets made his people forget his name because of Baal. God's people apparently stopped using Jehovah's name and substituted it with the name Baal, which means owner or master. This act would blur the line between Jehovah and Baal in the minds of the Israelites making it easier for them to combine the rituals of Baal worship with Jehovah, with worship of Jehovah. Yes, and please read for us uh, Hosea chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, and the footnote that comes with it. And in that day, Jehovah declares, You will call me my husband, and you will no longer call me master. The footnote at verse 16 says, Or my Baal. I will remove the names of the Baal images from her mouth, and they will no longer be remembered by their name. Yes. Thank you very much. And so, in line with Hosea chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, how did Satan blur the Israelites' view of Jehovah? And this were the same people who were at Mount Sinai. How did he blur? Uh, Sister Lynn, please. When they got involved in doing rituals of the Canaanites, they not using Jehovah's name. They use Baal's name, that means master. So they think this is the same as Jehovah. So they make them forget Jehovah. And so Jehovah would not bless them anyway. Yes. Serious stuff. Thank you, Sister Lee. Brother Rogers, please, your thought as well. I thought that was really interesting because that is what uh, many uh, Bible translators have done throughout the year. They've taken Jehovah's name out of the Bible and then they put the Lord there, which really means master. And so as you're reading the Bible, are we talking about Jehovah as Lord, Jesus as Lord, or some other person as Lord and master? So you can really see how this is very clever. It sort of blurred the Israelites' um, uh, view of Jehovah. See, Jehovah is a master, but he has an individual name that we need to use. Once we substitute that out, then it makes it very easy, again, to get involved in the false worship. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for the writers. We appreciate all the fine comments, friends. So let's keep them coming. And so now, uh, we, we've talked about the Israelites. Let's bring it down to his tactics today. Uh, let's, take, let's start with paragraph 10. Satan uses the same tactics today. He captures people by appealing to natural desires, promoting sexual immorality, and blurring people's view of Jehovah. Let us consider that last tactic first. So what tactics does Satan use today? What tactics? Sister Simon, please. All right. So Satan uses the same tactics today that he's always used. So there's how they say there's nothing new under the sun. And so it says he appeals to the natural desires, promoting sexual morality, and then also blurring people's view of Jehovah. Yes, thank you very much, Sir so Simon. A very powerful tactic that he uses. So let's, let's bring it down. Paragraph 11, let's see how he has succeeded in blurring people's view of Jehovah. Satan blurs people's view of Jehovah. After the death of Jesus' apostles, some who claimed to be Christians began to spread false teachings. These apostates started to blur the identity of the only true God. 
For example, they stopped using the divine name in their copies of the Bible and preferred such expressions as Lord. By removing God's personal name and replacing it with Lord, they made it difficult for, Bible, for a Bible reader to see how Jehovah is different from the other Lords mentioned in the scriptures. They used the same term Lord for Jehovah and for Jesus, making it difficult to understand that Jehovah and his son are different individuals with distinct positions. This confusion contributed to the development of the doctrine of the Trinity, a doctrine not taught in God's word. As a result, many see God as mysterious and believe that we cannot know him. What a lie. And so question 11 says, how has Satan blurred people's view of Jehovah? What's looking today? And uh, let's get uh, Brother Gray, David. Well, after, after Jesus had uh, passed away, some of his apostles who claimed to be Christians began to spread false teachings, and one of their tricks was to remove Jehovah's name out of the Bible, which hashed the biggest lie, the Trinity. Yes, indeed. Thank you, my brother. We appreciate that. And Sister Marin, please, Jeanette. And then to add to the confusion, they started using the word Lord, and they put it in place where Jehovah's name should have been, or else maybe even Jesus was called Lord. So that added more confusion and blurring Jehovah's personal name. Yes, thank you very much. And and uh, brother, uh, sister Yamato, please. And to add more confusion, yes. <clears throat> now uh, many people look at, well, what is God, male or female? The he or she? Or what? San Francisco. That, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, sister Yamato. Now. As uh, Brother Rogers reminded us, that expression, Lord, for the Israelites, what was that? Brother McCallum? And then master. Okay, and master or owner for the Israelites, what was the word? What was the name? Sister Huey? Yes, please. Yeah. Say it loud in the mic. Mm -hmm. No, no, the other side. Yeah, now we got it. You see, <laughs> so you see how clever uh, this creature has been. Uh, well, let's move on to paragraph twelve because he uses false religion. Let's see how he has done that. Satan appeals to immoral desires. In the days of ancient Israel, Satan used false religion to promote immorality. Today, he does the same. False religion tolerates and even promotes Im immoral conduct. Consequently, many who claim to serve God have abandoned his clear standards of morality. The Apostle Paul describes in his letter to the Romans what has been the result. Among the things not fitting are all forms of sexual immorality, including homosexuality. How important it is for us to stick to the Bible's clear teachings. Yes, and let's read those teachings. Romans chapter 1, verses 28 to 31, please, Brother O'Doy. Just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to a disapproved mental state to do the things not fitting. And they were filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, and badness, being full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and mal malice, being whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, schemers of what is harmful, disobedient to parents without understanding, false to agreements, having no natural affection, and merciless. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Brother Oto. I appreciate that. And so, question 12 says, what has false religion promoted? And with what result, as explained here, Romans 1, 20 and 21, what has false religion promoted? Uh, Brother Marin, Andrew? False religion um, tolerates and promotes immoral conduct. And so anything that could be alternative or any other kind of lifestyle, they're, they're accepting and promoting. And, and anybody that has any kind of piercings or any kind of crazy lifestyle they, they allow, and um, they have really just abandoned all possible standards that God has set. Yes, thank you very much, Brother Matt. And uh, Sister Hewitt, please. Uh, 
the picture is just so described descriptive two men embracing and they're thinking about going to church and everything is nowadays uh, uh, accepted so you can go be homosexual and you'll still be in good standing with your church yes thank you and uh, sister Muzi, please thank you sister Hewitt. one of the things that i remember especially going back to the 70s when homosexuality was just beginning to be uh, push the bomb people is that they would have uh, ministers of various denominations and they would uh, people would point out what Paul said in Romans and the way they explained that away was well that's what Paul said so they were separating saying that what Paul uh, taught was different than what Jesus taught and so they just basically now they don't even refer to these scriptures they they don't even use them to legitimize what they say is just legitimized in their eyes. Yeah. You must have been reading that, that old black Bible <laughs> from King James or something. Uh, Brother Rogers, please. Thank you. Sister Friday, last Friday when I was still, I was doing air, airport witnessing at the airport, I, I had a really interesting conversation with a college student. And um, I just had mentioned to him that mankind's problems were not political, but they were moral. And he says, oh, it's interesting you say that. He says, you know, we just discussed morality in my sociology class. Uh, the whole class discussed it. And so I asked him, I said, well, what conclusion did the class come to? He says, well, we came to the conclusion that morality is whatever the majority of people will accept. So that's the new morality. Not what the Bible you know, says, but whatever the majority of people will accept. So I asked him, I said, well, let me ask you this. What if the majority of people decided murder was okay? Would you be okay with that? And he smiled and looked at you. I didn't agree with that. Yeah. So hopefully, he goes to the website and maybe there's hope for him. Yeah. <laughs> that was logical. It, 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 you could see it. Sister Fortuna Rogers, please. Thank you, Brother Rogers. Yes, and you know, as it also brings out there in uh, Romans 1, 24 to 27, you know, it says that's why Jehovah gave these people up. Let them work out the desires of their heart. But he never leaves anybody without warning on anything about uh, that's either right or wrong. But these people want to do it, go ahead, let them do it, and they'll suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, so this picture, uh, that, that picture has a lot of colors in it. Why? All those colors, for those Well, that's the colors of the uh, gay flag. Um, and so, um, you know, you see here that, you know, worship your way. Uh, many religions teach that homosexuality is bad, but now they're offering uh, places of worship where homosexual, uh, homosexuality is accepted in the worship. And even the uh, priests or pastors, they themselves are gay. So, you know, um, pretty open. Sad, isn't it? As Sister Gorospi, please. Thank you, Brother Udo. And also, someone did explain to me that it's um, involving the colors of the rainbow, too, which is really a mockery of what the rainbow really stands for. And I, I met a person that was um, allowing for someone to witness to her, and she happened to be of that lifestyle. But she expressed that uh, the people that had died during um, Noah's time that they have a hope, that there's hope for them. So it's really sad to see how they really believe it and they look at the rainbow in that kind of way as well. Yes, mm -hmm. they messed up the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Brother Cruz, please, thank you, Sister Cruz. Mm -hmm. so Romans 1 and 32 really mm -hmm. applies when we think of it because it says that these know, or said they, those that are teaching these things, that the religious leaders and that these churches know full well the righteous decree of God they not only keep on doing them, but also approve of those practicing them. And so that's what this sign represents. They approve of that type of uh, practice of homosexuality or other immoral practices. And now they promote it through the media, uh, through the television and advertisements such as this. Yes, indeed. And Brother San Luis, thank you, Brother Cruz. And it really is a snare. We've talked about uh, how they mentioned that the false religion tolerates and even promotes. And that's the first thing they say. They may not have necessarily started out with promoting, like uh, Sister Brown mentioned in the 70s. They just preach tolerance, mm -hmm. right? Tolerance. Oh, okay. 
and then after a while it becomes promotion. And so it's really a, a snare for us because they may, they may say, oh no, you're being tolerant if you think this way. Well, as the last uh, sentence in the paragraph mentioned, it's, it's all the more important for us to stick to what the Bible really says. Yes, thank you very much, Brother San Luis. We appreciate all those fine comments, friends. Let's keep them coming because paragraph 13, what is another tactic that Satan uses? Satan appeals to natural desires. We have a natural desire to learn skills that can help us provide for ourselves and our families. Often we can gain those skills by attending school and being diligent students. But we must be cautious. The educational system in many countries teaches students not only practical skills, but also human philosophy. Students are encouraged to question the existence of God and to disregard the Bible. They are told that the theory of evolution is the only intelligent explanation for the origin of life. Such teachings are opposed to the wisdom of God. Question 13 says, what is another tactic that Satan uses? What's another tactic? Uh, Brother uh, Thompson, please in the back. So we know First uh, Timothy 5.8 talks about providing for those who are your own. And if you don't, you just on the face of people decide that they're going to just work, 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 and leave Jehovah out the equation. But then they start attending these schools to get higher education for means of uh, receiving some type of education to the point that they, um, they, they practice the skills, but uh, they also get involved in these philosophies that's being promoted in schools today okay and so and so uh, uh, what is the what is he appealing to which has snatched people out of brother San Luis Our basic uh, necessity to eat yes thank you and uh, brother Alvin so on that point supposing you're a biologist and you didn't believe in evolution uh, that would affect your career. And so there's that fear of, oh, I have to just go along with the accepted wisdom or else I won't be able to feed myself in, in this industry. And so that's another one of the snares Satan has. There's uh, abundance of data, but actually it's all, you know, all supporting a, a point that's been disproved, easily disproved. So that's how they get by uh, with this delusion that the uh, evolution is true. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Brother Albonne. We appreciate all the fine comments, friends. That brings us to paragraph 14. So, so let's look at human philosophy. What does it nurture? Human philosophy ignores or contradicts Jehovah's righteous standards. It does not nurture the fruitage of God's spirit, but rather the works of the flesh. It generates pride and arrogance, and the result is that people become lovers of themselves. These qualities are the opposite of the meek, humble spirit that God's servants are encouraged to have. Some Christians who have pursued a university education have had their minds molded by human thinking rather than by God's thinking. Let us consider just one example of what can happen. So question 40 says, what does human philosophy nurture? Uh, let's get Ian, please, Ian there. Um nurtures on human thinking and being independent and not uh, concerning Jehovah's righteous standards and it um, generates pride and arrogance. Yes, thank you. And Anaya? <laughs> Ignorance ignores Jehovah's righteousness. Yes, they do. And uh, uh, let's get uh, Brother McNaughton, please. I saw your hand earlier. I remember when I was in nursing school, I called one of my teachers, uh, Mrs., um, on accident. She was a doctor, and she cut my sentence off and told me, it's doctor. And she wouldn't let me continue what I was asking until I corrected myself and started over and used this doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I called my doctor Mike. He did not say anything. I'm to get a new one. <laughs> For the girls, please. <laughs> Yeah, one's um, Christians who have pursued university education 
um, really have their minds molded by human thinking rather than God, godly thinking. And that's the, the trap that we have to be watch out for uh, because it ignores or contradicts um, righteous standards. Um, there's a lot of different um, medical practices that might seem real good. You, you hear about people getting real good benefit from these medical practices, but they go against Bible principles. And so we have to stay away from those things because we can fool ourselves. Yes, indeed. And let's look at uh, Proverbs 15 through 16, and then we're going to talk about this picture. Proverbs 15 through 16. A sister who has been in full-time service for over 15 years says, As a baptized witness, I have read and heard about the dangers of pursuing university education, but I dismiss such warnings. I thought that the council did not apply to me. What challenges did she face? She admits, Studying for my courses took so much time and effort that I was too busy to linger in prayer to Jehovah the way I used to, too exhausted to enjoy Bible discussions with others, and too tired to prepare well for the meetings. Thankfully, once I realized that being immersed in higher education was damaging my relationship with Jehovah, I knew I had to stop, and I did. What effect did higher education have on this sister's thinking? She answers, I am ashamed to admit that the education I pursued taught me to be critical of others, especially my brothers and sisters, to expect too much of them and to isolate myself from them. It took me a long time to unlearn these lessons. That time in my life showed me just how dangerous it is to ignore the warnings given by our Heavenly Father through His organization. Jehovah knew me better than I knew myself. If only I had listened. Thank you very much, Brother Odoi. So, questions 15 through 16. What do you learn from the experience of one sister that we just had? Uh, let's start with Sister Maxine Brown, please. In the picture on the left, she's sitting kind of in, in the middle between um, a boy and a girl. And she looks like she's interested in what's being talked about. On the picture of the right, she obviously looks like she's sitting in the Kingdom Hall, and she's bored, she's looking out the window, and she's paying no attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Sister Brown. And Sister Autie, please. Uh, this was really interesting to me because she had been uh, in the full-time service for 15 years and then went to uh, higher education. And um, what she described was that she was exhausted and couldn't prepare for the meetings from all the work she had to do. And I thought, yeah, my job does that to me. And, and then I thought, yes, every once in a while I get that thought, maybe I could change my career and I, because of the pressure and sometimes the persecution at the office that does the same exact thing. Um, but I thought this was a great warning because um, she obviously wasn't uh, just out of high school. She was in the middle of you know, being in full-time service. So I learned that um, it applies to me too. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Sister Chamberlain, thank you, Sister Autie. Sister Chamberlain, please. And she also said here that I, um, the education I pursued taught me to be critical of others. And so she was trying to rationalize by using critical thinking. And that's one of the things that they do offer in college is a critical thinking class. So she probably felt like um, no one was up to her level because they do teach you about human conduct. But it's so contrary to what, uh, what Jehovah teaches and teaches us how to be and humble. And so she probably felt elevated among everyone else, probably felt everyone was talking slow or whatever, and so she couldn't comprehend what she was learning uh, at the meeting. Thank you. And uh, um, I looked at your, your name just went out of my head. Sister, right there, please. Just give me your name again. Simpson. Simpson, I apologize. I thought it interesting as well with the critical view that um, she took of others and that those who go to those who pursue higher education are actually taught to think that way the, the the value of knowledge is a relationship with Jehovah if you don't have that if you don't have that as a basis then anything that you observe you come to the wrong conclusion mm -hmm. yes indeed and sister Cruz please thank you sister Simpson So this sister didn't say that she became inactive. She, um, she still prayed to Jehovah. She still participated in Bible discussions and prepared for the meeting, but it was getting to the point where she wasn't getting any pleasure. It was weighing her down. She wasn't enjoying any of 
those spiritual things. And that what she was learning, the university, was really the works of the flesh. And so that affected her to the point where she couldn't even enjoy being with the brothers and sisters. Because this human philosophy, it, it promotes a person, it promotes thinking, it doesn't um, teach someone to be humble and to give glory to Jehovah. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Sister Cruz. So what was the lesson that she learned? What was the lesson that she learned? Sister Lynn, please. After she realized how wrong she was, then she said it took a long time before she could get rid of that wrong thought. So we can see how Satan's crafty acts really captured her thinking for so long. Yes. Thank you, Sister Lynn. The deep programming can take a long time. Well, let's move on to paragraph 17, because now that we've discussed all these things, what should be our determination? Be determined never to be taken captive by means of the philosophy and empty deception of Satan's world. Continually guard against Satan's tactics. Never allow him to blur your view of Jehovah. Live by Jehovah's high moral standards, and do not let Satan trick you into ignoring Jehovah's advice. But what if you detect that you have already been affected by the thinking of this world? The next article will show how God's word can help us to overturn even strongly entrenched thoughts and habits. So question 17a says, what should be our determination? And Sister Roque, please. We never allow Satan to lure ourselves to his tactic, his Jehovah's moral standard. Yes, yes. And uh, thank you, Sister Roque. Uh, Brother Thomas, please. In 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 11, it tells us that uh, we're not ignorant of uh, Satan's designs, but we don't want to be overreached by uh, him. So that's what we got to guard again. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Brother Thomas. Sister Oak, Vanessa, please, your thoughts. Also, we should not let Satan trick us into ignoring Jehovah's advice. Yes, because we have come to... We have to know our enemy, right? And we've come to know him that what is he? When it comes to people, what is he? Uh, Brother Gray? Extremely crafty and resourceful and working on our imperfections and our needs. Yes, indeed. Brother Alvin? He's a manslayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sister uh, uh, Otier? And he is the enemy of people. Uh-huh. Uh, Josiah? He is also a roaring lion seeking to devour people. Yeah, it's a scary thought, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sister Ruiz, was that your? Okay, Sister Mozik? And he has a one-track mind, and that is to destroy our relationship with Jehovah. Yes. Uh, master manipulator thought? Mm -hmm. Very clever. And when does he sleep? Miss Rachel. Uh, Sister Smothers, please. Right there. He never sleeps. Huh, so we're in trouble, isn't it? Okay, so we know what to do. So let's do our review. The tactics Satan has used. So what tactics has Satan used to blur people's view of Jehovah? What tactics has he used? Sister Wyrick, please. But he has used uh, apostates to uh, lure people away from the true teaching of Jehovah. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, when it comes to knowing Jehovah, what does he blur? Uh, uh, Sister Mary, please. Yes, Jeanette. His, name, Satan blurs his name, <clears throat> Jehovah's name. Yeah, what is the name that they use in Christendom for the only true God? Uh, Sister Vaughn, please. They use the name of, they use a title. Okay. The Lord. Ah, mm -hmm. and as we've learned, Lord, owner, master, and for the Israelites, what is the name? Somebody said it. Oh, <laughs> Terry, Sister, Sister Harris. Baal. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know they were worshiping Baal. 
Scarce. What tactics has Satan used to appeal to immoral desires? Sister Rocky, please. Satan uses false religion to evoke immoral promote the morality, and also among the things not appropriate are all form of sexual immorality, including homosexual. Yes, they do that. Thank you. So, okay, Sister Huey, please, hide. And he's, uh, um, he's so s smart that uh, people don't realize that that's what he's doing. And he's just all over the news, the uh, television, the, wherever, he is all over it, so we have to be very careful. Yes, indeed. What tactics has Satan used to appeal to natural desires? Uh, Brother Marin, Andrew, please. Satan has used the uh, desires that we have naturally to learn skills to provide for ourselves and our families. And so having an education system that teaches things that are anti-God, um, human philosophy rather than Jehovah's standards, uh, the, the uh, teaching of evolution, the theory of evolution, and the origin of life, these things just go against God's wisdom. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to get the skills, we got to go to school. What is the caution? As you tiptoe, if you should tiptoe. Uh, Sister Hewitt? You really have to know the truth very well. And then you have to make very clear decisions on what you're going to study, that it will not take you out of the truth. Thank you. And uh, Brother Harris, please, your thought as well. So Jehovah made us so that we will always be learning. The Bible says we'll never know everything there is to know. We'll always be learning. So it's not necessarily learning that we have to be careful with. It's the outside influences that come with learning that we have to be careful of. He's so clever. I... <laughs> so, caution, beware of being captured by Satan the devil. Well, friends, we've done so beautifully well for the Watch Our Study today. We'll look forward to next week's as well. And uh, we'd like to commend all of you for your fine comments. And, and we thank all the attendants for for working so well with the mics and the sounds, and, and um, we, we, we really appreciate that. And we thank Brother Odo and Jason for the fine read for us. Uh, appreciate that. And so uh, we have just one announcement for you. Uh, a meeting for field service will be at 3 o'clock right here up front, and I believe Brother Harris will be organizing that for us. And so now we'd like to invite you to stand if you're able to do so. One of our most beautiful songs is song number 49 making Jehovah's heart glad. After the song, we'll invite Brother Scott Gorosby back to the platform. He will represent us in prayer before Jehovah. Song number 49, making Jehovah's heart glad. So let's sing to make him glad.
God, Jehovah, at the close of our meeting, we want to say thank you for giving us encouragement for today, the um, warnings, the things to watch out for so we don't blur um, our vision of you. We're very happy to know you by name, Jehovah, and to use that name and to be thinking and pondering over that wonderful name that you have, that you caused to become um, anything that's necessary to save your people and then also to help your people to um, be what is what's necessary to do your will as well. May your Holy Spirit continue to be with this congregation here in El Cerrito to um, preach and teach and to do your will, to raise up the children and the families to stick together so we can honor and praise you in this community, Jehovah. Please continue to be with this congregation here as they are doing their very best to um, preach and teach in the community to help others um, come to an accurate knowledge of truth. Help us to take into spiritual instruction regularly and continue to make our mind over to be transformed and that way we can um, put your thoughts into our mind and heart and um, benefit from the divine teaching. We're very grateful that you care for us this way and we pray Jehovah that we can um, do our very best to honor and praise you. Please help us all to band together in this time of the end, knowing that we have to stick together and be united and to have joy amongst ourselves, our brothers and sisters, and to care for our dear ones that are sick and elderly and older ones, um, in being kind to ones that even have uh, emotional difficulties at times. Um, when we do that, we show ourselves uh, to promote the spiritual paradise that we have and be in unity with our dear brothers and sisters even throughout the world. So please guide and direct us. Um, please bless our day, Jehovah. Uh, we're filled with spiritual good things and the physical benefits we have from serving you and spiritual. And we pray that we can continue to associate with our dear brothers and sisters and to greet them and to be able to uh, be thankful that we're here to meet so freely at this time. So please continue to be with us. Help us to do your will and help the ones that are possibly on the phone line as well to continue to um, take an instruction and Help us to not to forget them as well. We do um, love you, Jehovah, and we want to say thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. You know, it could be a lot better. I want to like say, uh, say hi to Ian real fast. Uh, cool. Yeah, good to see you there. Oh, yeah. You did? Oh, you got to help. Uh, okay. I got to help. I have it. I would love to sit down. I would take something that I would, I would use because I haven't eaten. <laughs> uh -huh. I have a thing that's electrical that I got from UCSF, and that helped me. But they also gave me some medication in here too. But I would, I would rather say give somebody. Not that I didn't need it. I have some. This is cold. No, I, I do. But I appreciate you. This is nice. Uh huh. You see, this go around for my leg. Here. 
I know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. How you doing, brother? Enjoyed your comment. Thanks, Mark. How you doing? Doing okay. Doing all right? What did I do? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you looking for a job? Oh, you know, I want to go back to the bench. Oh, for real? Yeah, I'm not sure if you call me and tell me about it. I'm going to get a special meeting about it. I'm going to speak up to him about having a schedule back and working on the day. He's like saying that I might show up not really good for me. I guess he's talking about not helping or something. I'm like, hey, I'm working on it by looking for him. That lesson just talked about, about philosophies of men. And when you have somebody that's not serving the whole God, how could he make any kind of judgment call on what you're doing when you're in a position not to miss any need? Right, well, that's the idea. I mean, right. That, that something doing with Right, that's true too. But, but the same, the same thing would apply. Like if you was uh, pursuing baptism, you you would go out in the ministry in the morning, you know, sometimes and things like that. You have to look at the overall picture of trying to do the requirements that Jehovah expects of you. So you don't let nobody make the decisions for you. They can just make a suggestion, you know, but to turn around and tell you, wait, does he work? Yeah, he works. Oh, he, oh okay. Yeah, he works. Yeah, you know, just saying. You just, things I should just speak up, you know, about, you know, letting them know. But, but. I work Monday through Friday during the summer in but, Cal, but. Well, that could be too. That could be. That's probably too late if I heard something. Right, 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 right. right. But you, yeah, you should have did that prior right. to, you know, because. Uh -huh. Is there a Monday through Friday thing? See what you well, what, what you, I'm doing is Monday through Friday. I know, but what I'm saying to you on that first job, what you should have did was, first of all, if you have religious things taking place, they're supposed to honor that. That's where your your faith is tested. And this is where they always say, well, weekends are required, right so that is kind of the time. Hey, you. But is there somebody else who's money to write? The bear didn't get you? No. Oh, oh, oh so everybody has. Okay, so you well could then, get some sleep, if said, that's what you that signed up to do, then that's part of what you are uh, uh, dealing with. Okay. Because mm -hmm. here's, here's, here's what happened to me in my job. It, it came down to, uh, when it came to, uh, oh, my Wednesday. The job knew, even though I'm getting, let's say I got up to five. Let's just say I got up to five. So, if I got off at five, then um, they knew not to mess with me on Wednesday. I could have got off at three. They won. Ten in the morning. They knew my Wednesday was going to mess with me. And one day that they did, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I already told you. I already told you. You didn't tell me that. Yes, I, I did. It. Yes, I did. <laughs> so, uh, but it seems, uh, this is it it seems the probable uh, answer. Yeah. 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 Uh, Since you better go get you some plums. It's the plum. I have to get some plums. I'm okay. I'll, I'll bring you some. I'll get you some. Oh, okay. Oh, excuse me. They were nothing like this. More pears? Oh, more pears? Yeah. But they were crunchy and sour. Oh, I have some pears. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I have to borrow his car. Did you guys go camping? No, I'm, no, I need to go to, I'm, I need I mean, to, I'm hot. paying everything by cash. I don't want to owe you nothing. Oh, okay. Eight, right. 11. Why, where are you going? All right. Uh, you 
going to work tonight? No, I'm not going to work tonight. Uh, Thanks for all the hard work you're doing. Oh, just uh, 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 yeah, it's ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brother, I'm, I'm going to thank you, and thank you. Yeah. I'm going to eat one now. Is it one yeah, already? They, they wash. Oh, they are? Some of them, but you got to wash it. won't wash them again. Oh, okay. Just take a drip over there, right there. <laughs> 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 and, I was going to drip you down there. And, 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 Where you went, Clearly? Uh, Clearly. Oh, yeah, right here. No, I didn't hear that. That's all yeah. 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 He suffered. Oh, no, 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 I told him, I told him, I meant to embrace stuff like that. Okay. I, I don't like this. Like, this one, I love it. You know, you can't do that. I understand. But he's supposed to know automatically. Yeah. 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 Well, then we'll have plenty of proof. We have a lot of proof. All kinds of proof. Everything. Real proof. Real proof. What do we have here? Oh, it's terrible. Okay, let me ask you. Yeah, I'm tired. You need to break. All right. Okay, we're going to do it. Uh, here we are. Uh, yeah. 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 the park beginning. We got to do it. 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 We you come, okay. Uh, I didn't want out of my way to be open. I went out of my way to be open. I got to get my home. I got to get my home. I got to get my So, therefore, we can't say I didn't help him because I went. I really extended my health to And uh, in addition to that, you know, it got to the point where he had to leave because he was unappreciated here, not because he got busted and in the lives. So, therefore, let your father get in. So he suffered. He, he got 12 stitches down the front of his face. He lost his phone. Somebody took his phone. He, he shouldn't have necessarily been in that uh, Hello? Hi. environment, but he put himself She's gone. Him. I, I talked to him. What's her name? Oh, my brain. <laughs> Sister Odoi. Sister Odoi. This okay. sister's trying to catch you. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, there's always decisions we make also come with consequences. And it, 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 you know, my thing is, you know, witnesses have higher standards, or they should have higher standards, because you made the decision to go to the this way. Because it's money to go. Okay, you say, oh, that's good. The thing is, that you're not, uh, you're not, uh, See, here's what it is. Oh, you were running, you didn't think that was the case. You don't think they know that? Okay, but you, they were using you. You got to catch up. Yeah, but I do get tired and get off the work. I know that I'm too busy to eat. I'm working for two hours. That's eight hours sleep. That's good. And then you, you do whatever you do, and you get a gift, you know. But that's what you, that's, that, that's, that's a good night. Over there. Thank you, sir. And I laid, I laid down. Well, after you, you would think that.
I would be refreshed. Okay, but wait a minute. What about it being rich record for the time you start? And I think my body must have stayed in one position for a long time. So anyway, I just kept feeling crappy all evening, so I just stayed in bed and watched TV. I watched the uh, August broadcast and did some reading, but I just... I'm off to the sympathetic care. I just had, and, and I think it was something out my dear. I had a doctor, my primary doctor, he knows all about it. I took care of it. My head felt so heavy. Because my, 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 my uh, medical advocate with me, she said she couldn't say nothing. Yeah, I got that. But she got heavy when she turned to the house. I got a picture saying that if I get a work with her. Now I have a little time to turn once I get to go. Now I have to show the surgery and I work with her. But what they fail to realize when you're trying to tell them, it's not just my shoulder, it's my neck. So my neck was bad. My neck. I can't. I can't. I can't. But I did. I did. Uh, I did it the best. And this is about to Hey, how are you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? Hey, Mr. Brown. Hey, Mr. Brown. Hey, Do you like hugs or handshakes? The problem was, what do you prefer? Overing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good hugger. He's a good hugger. Mr. Brown, how are you doing? How are you doing? Plus, you got two got pretty good in there, Tara. He made it up. What's that? Cars? Y'all work there? Uh, routing number, thank you. Yeah. 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 We was in the other church, we was down in uh, over there where the electric uh, or plant at over there on uh, but anyway, Smith, man, enjoy Port Love, over there. Yeah, I got it. And I'll uh, talk about it. Okay. You got I, don't, I don't try to steer people wrong on, yeah, stuff, yeah. on purpose. I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but the other part of it has to do with your credit. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and no money is involved out of your pocket. You're lying? Yes. That's why I think that. I know in the game hall, Steph. Let me get off the step before the light number <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 to, uh, I make it here. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. I'm up trying to, to now that I my card year starts in September, I'm trying to slow down right now and get rest. So, because I got to be back at, but my body is, I'm, I'm feeling the effects of sin. I'm so tight. We look at it. I think about it. I think about it. Me too. My father was eight. And, and, and I used to talk about, I suffered from migraine headaches. My father said, I didn't have a headache till I was 80 years old. Not even one. My father had headaches. He had rheumatism, but he never complained about nothing. He went out in the backyard, picked his greens, bent over, did it. Uh, no, this ain't that kind of thing. It's totally yeah. different. But they do, they, they actually uh, start corporations. No gray hair, she had no lines. Oh, yeah, I have to tell you, I have to tell you. Her face a big hair and everything. I'm like, we, we messed up. We're really messed up. Oh, boy. And they, they yeah, take care end, of us. They That's end say, pretty soon. I pray for it all. Oh, Jehovah. Well, I think about you got to make pay that. She was 87 when she died. She still had that perfect when you get right. She didn't have a little bit of gray in her hair. Maybe it's like I have her a little less. But what happened, yeah, what happened to me? Uh, all of the women ahead of me. So imperfection yeah. is that imperfection. It says so, Satan. But really it's 14. Yeah. Satan loved to see us all decrepted and. He did. <laughs> I don't care about the lines. Yeah. You know, I thought at one time about Botox, but I'm like, you know, forget it. I'm not that. I'm not trying to. I read that. Yeah. Now that's a point. Anyway, I, I yeah, that's what I heard. Take, I don't yeah. scare people. I was going to do that on my, right here, my back. I have pros feet real bad, but I said, forget it. So that's too many, trying to too get many years to that stuff. Because you got to do certain, certain things that you do. That's crazy. You got to stay flat for a certain amount of time. Something will move. You got to stay flat for a certain amount of time. Why do I want to inject something? Yeah, I don't yeah. Think it could kill me. That's like, true. It's almost over anyway. <laughs> so I just figured I'll wear the wrinkles. I have to be. No, that was when you came here to me. No, it's only why you went. Are you going now? It's like eating at the house. I'm trying to make a Bible study.
very seldom. Well, I sure earned mine with what but I went through. It's, it's a wonder but I'm still standing. Not a spiritual person. You don't want to run with wise people and become wise. So, yeah. ...images, and they were all over Israel at that time. Okay. And, and, and Brother Abba, please. Also, homosexuality. Ah. Yeah. Um, and, and, it became what? <laughs> uh, Sister Wiley? Become, um, become normal, and just like today we see homosexual uh, come out of the closet, and now they just they talk about it like it's nothing. So uh, this is something that you have different pride, pride uh, parades and everything else. So it shows how rampant it has come in our day, too. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, friends. Let's move on to paragraph 9, because uh, we come to the third tactic. Uh, let's see how he, he, he used that. Satan used a third tactic. He blurred the Israelites' view of Jehovah. In the days of the prophet Jeremiah, Jehovah declared that the false prophets made his people forget his name because of Baal. God's people apparently stopped using Jehovah's name and substituted it with the name Baal, which means owner or master. This act would blur the line between Jehovah and Baal in the minds of the Israelites making it easier for them to combine the rituals of Baal worship with Jehovah, with worship of Jehovah. Yes, and please read for us uh, Hosea chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, and the footnote that comes with it. And in that day, Jehovah declares, You will call me my husband, and you will no longer call me master. The footnote at verse 16 says, Or my Baal. I will remove the names of the Baal images from her mouth, and they will no longer be remembered by their name. Yes. Thank you very much. And so, in line with Hosea chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, how did Satan blur the Israelites' view of Jehovah? But this were the same people who were at Mount Sinai. How did he blur? Um, Sister Lynn, please. When they got involved in uh, rituals of the Canaanites, they not using Jehovah's name. They use Baal's name, that means master. So they think this is the same as Jehovah. So they make them forget Jehovah. And so Jehovah will not bless them anyway. Yes. Safe, yes. Thank you, Sister Lee. Brother Rogers, please, your thought as well. I thought that was really interesting because that is what uh, many uh, Bible translators have done throughout the year. They've taken Jehovah's name out of the Bible and then they put the Lord there, which really means master. And so as you're reading the Bible, are we talking about Jehovah as Lord, Jesus as Lord, or some other person as Lord or master? So you can really see how this is very clever. It sort of blurred the Israelites' um, uh, view of Jehovah. See, Jehovah is a master, but he has an individual name that we need to use. Once we substitute that out, then it makes it very easy, again, to get involved in the false worship. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Brother Rogers. We appreciate all the fine comments, friends, so let's keep them coming. And so now, uh, we, we've talked about the Israelites. Let's bring it down to his tactics today. Uh, let's, take, let's start with paragraph 10. Satan uses the same tactics today. He captures people by appealing to natural desires, promoting sexual immorality, and blurring people's view of Jehovah. Let us consider that last tactic first. So what tactics does Satan use today? What tactics? Sister Simon, please. All right. So Satan uses the same tactics today that he's always used. So there's how they say there's nothing new under the sun. And so it says he appeals to the natural desires, promoting sexual morality, and then also blurring people's view of Jehovah. 
Yes, thank you very much, Sir so Simon. <laughs> a very powerful tactic that he uses. So let's let's bring it down. Paragraph eleven. Let's see how he has succeeded in blurring people's view of Jehovah. Satan blurs people's view of Jehovah. After the death of Jesus' apostles, some who claimed to be Christians began to spread false teachings. These apostates started to blur the identity of the only true God. For example, they stopped using the divine name in their